After starting an SSRI two weeks ago, your patient tells you they had the recent onset of insomnia, dry mouth, or loss of libido. As clinicians, we might refer to the traditional belief that these side effects will improve with medication persistence. But what is the evidence base to support this belief? Hi, Paul Zarkowski here at the Psychopharmacology Institute. Luckily, a new study attempts to answer this question, but also to resolve differences in previous studies with an improved methodology. The authors analyzed results from one of the canons of psychiatry, the STAR-D trial. If you recall, the first phase involved starting citalopram at 20 mg QD, with dose increases to 40 mg by week 4, with a top possible dose of 60 mg at 6 weeks. But STAR-D included two rating scales of side effects. The first is the patient-rated inventory of side effects, or PRICE, that categorizes side effects into nine different organ or function systems. Within each system, subjects rated their side effects on a two-point scale, with zero as absent, one as tolerable, and two as distressing. Rating scales were completed after two, four, six, nine, and 12 weeks, with 12 weeks as a full course of treatment. The authors included a table of side effects of all participants at each visit. The percentage of subjects reporting each side effect can be seen to decrease monotonically for each visit from week 2 to study completion at week 12, particularly for the more common side effects. For example, 57% of subjects endorsed difficulty sleeping at week 2, down to 38% by week 12. A similar monotonic decline was seen for the other most common side effects, including headache, fatigue, anxiety, dry mouth, and loss of sexual desire. The authors argue that evidence presented with this method is not convincing, as it does not take into account that subjects with more distressing side effects are disproportionately more likely to exit the study early, leaving the remaining study group with a lower incidence of side effects. Here is where the authors improved the methodology over previous studies to account for the likely higher percentage of side effects in subjects that leave a study early. They stratified groups based on their last visit. They analyzed data on overall side effects from the other rating scale in STAR-D, the frequency and intensity of side effects rating and global rating of side effects burden. Subjects rated their overall side effects in the past week in three domains, frequency, intensity, and burden on daily functioning on a seven-point scale. As many of the side effects of antidepressants overlap or interact with the common symptoms of major depression, the authors created a model that controls for severity of depression using responses from the Quick Inventory of Depression Symptomatology self-rated scale. Next, the authors created three colorful graphs of side effects by group over each visit for each domain, including frequency, intensity, and burden on daily functioning. For descriptive purposes, I would like to describe each of the three graphs as a rainbow with discrete, non-overlapping bands, except the bands immediately start to diverge. The red band on top represents the subjects that stop meds after two weeks, significantly higher than all other groups in all three domains with side effects present nearly half the time with moderate intensity. Next, subjects that left after four weeks are represented with a yellow band. This group showed a significant increase in frequency and burden of side effects with treatment. The green band in the middle represents subjects that left after six weeks, with no significant change in frequency or intensity, but a significant increase in burden of side effects. Looks down in blue is the group that stops citalopram after nine weeks. They were the first group to show a significant improvement with treatment in both frequency and intensity of side effects. And finally, on the bottom of each of the three domains are subjects that completed all 12 weeks of treatment in violet. Subjects that completed the study showed a significant decrease in frequency, intensity, and burden of side effects. The authors note this significant improvement occurred even after controlling for any improvement in the severity of their depression. 
I find this study convincing of the existence of more than one temporal pattern of side effects within the population of patients starting antidepressant medication. On one extreme, patients that present with troubling side effects at the first follow-up are likely to see their side effects become progressively worse. But for the 1,900 subjects out of 2,800 that were able to complete either nine weeks or the full course of 12, will often see an improvement in their overall side effects. It is also worth noting that the side effects did not completely go away. This is most easily seen in results from the price. After 12 weeks of treatment, side effects involving sexual functioning were rated as most distressing with 26% of subjects reporting loss of sexual desire, 19% with difficulty achieving an orgasm, and 7.2% with trouble with erections. 36% of subjects with sexual side effects rated them as distressing. Side effects associated with sleep were the next most distressing category, with 38% reporting difficulty sleeping and 18% reporting sleeping too much. 30% of subjects with sleep-related side effects rated them as distressing. Needless to say, even with overall improvement in the frequency, intensity, and burden of side effects, there are still troublesome side effects that persist after a full trial of medication. This study highlights the need to assess for side effects, particularly at the first visit after starting a new antidepressant medication. The value of this study is in patients with tolerable side effects that wish to complete a treatment trial. They could be reassured that evidence suggests their side effects could improve and resolve over time.